Hey everybody, welcome back to the Vinyl Junkie Record Shop. My name is Mike and it has been a minute since I've done a video for you guys, so I've been wanting to do this one for a while. Um, and I'm going to do this as the first episode of hopefully what I can do more of down the road is a new series uh, in introducing um, newer artists to you all that you may have not heard of. Um, as, uh, as most of you know, I'm mostly a metalhead guy. Today, uh, the theme of the day is death metal. As you can see, I'm sporting that goat whore t-shirt here. Um, so the first band I'm going to feature in uh, this uh, um, the new artist series is an up-and-coming American death metal band that I just became familiar with a few weeks ago when I caught them coming through town, and they absolutely demolished a little dive bar in Indianapolis. Uh, and I'm talking about the band Maul from Fargo, North Dakota, and here is the album. Uh, they are on Redefining Darkness Records. There's the back. And the first thing you'll notice about this is the awesome uh, album art. I'm going to try to eliminate the glare there and get to get this as close to you guys as you can. Just check out this amazing uh, artwork on, on the album cover. Um, and there's some more on the back. Uh, these uh, The depictions of these uh, um, evil looking beings on here are, are, uh, are I think, perfect to suit uh, the content that you'll find therein uh, in these vinyl grooves. Um, while I've got this out, I do want to maybe kind of give a shout out to the artist. Let me see if I can find um, who painted that. Album cover art painted by Jason Barnett. Jason Barnett. Um, props to Jason. That's a fantastic album cover. That might be that's, that that might just be the album cover of the year for me. Love the artwork on this. Everything from the colors to the uh, just to the um, um, uh, quality of, of of the illustration. Uh, it's just a fantastic album cover. Okay, and again, I, I think if when an album cover kind of really um, conveys what's going on in the music, then you've really nailed it. Okay, so let's talk about the band a little bit. Um, the only photo on the sheet is is that one, which is really cool. If you go to the band's Facebook page, Mall the band, I believe, uh, just check out Mall uh, band on Facebook. Um, and I think they have a Bandcamp page also. But you'll see that this, this photo is actually, uh, when you turn it upside down, it's a reflection in a pond of the guy standing on the, on the ground in front of it. And you can actually see that <clears throat> their faces. Um, if this could have been on the full, the full photograph of that, that's an awesome photograph too. Because uh, you, you don't really see what they look like. Um, but they're metal looking, death metal looking dudes. Okay, so lineup. Um, on bass guitar, we've got Mike Griggs. On drums, Robbie Anderson. Vocals, uh, Garrett Alvarado. Uh, and guitars are Al Nicholas and Anthony Lamb. Now, I do not know if those are the guys that were part of the touring band. A lot of these bands have different touring lineups for various reasons. Uh, so shame on me. I do not know if those musicians, if those particular um, guys I just listed, are the guys that are credited with recording the album. Um, but anyway, um, let's get into it. So what can you expect from Maul? Well, if you are a death metal fan, uh, you will not be disappointed at all. Oh, let me show you, let's get, let's get the record out. I purchased this at the concert and I opted to get the color in color version, which it looks like it's got kind of a, a blue magenta, um, you know, a little bit of variation of the different kind of album cover art that's going on there. I opted for this one over the splatter, uh, as Garrett, the vocalist, uh, reminded me as I was making this purchase. A lot of people opt for the splatter, and he likes things. He liked this version, uh, because it's a little bit different than that, and I agreed completely. So, uh, I picked that one up. So, and again, Redefining Darkness, I want to talk about that label for just a second. What a tremendous label for up-and-coming uh, uh, metal bands. If you're not familiar with Redefining Darkness, check them out as well. They have a whole roster full of fantastic up-and-coming uh, metal bands. Uh, so, back to Maul. Um, if you are a death metal fan, uh, there's nothing not to like about this album. Uh, uh, I'm not a death metal uh, connoisseur. I like death metal. I can't articulate to, to a lot of the differences between the different uh, subgenres going on within there. 
Um, uh, but the biggest thing going on with Maul or with death metal in general is usually the vocal delivery, vocal style. It's not for everybody. Um, if you don't like cl uh, cl cookie monster type of growls, then death metal might not be your thing. But if you like that style of vocals, um, that's what you're going to get with Maul. Now, I do want to say that vocal-wise, this guy, Garrett Alvarado, this guy is an amazing and talented death metal vocalist. Now, some of you might think that there's not a lot of talent that goes on in, in that type of singing. And, and you know, it's it, sing, there's a difference between singing and vocal delivery, okay? Uh, you're not going to get singing on death metal albums. But I'm telling you, the, the type of noises and sounds and, and just uh, different shifts and shape of, of vocal delivery and, and variation that, that this guy gives you uh, within death metal style vocals is absolutely tremendous. And I can't, it's got to take a tremendous amount of talent to be able to make those types of noises and sounds with just your, your throat, your vocal cords. So um, off, the, off the top, vocal wise, uh, one of the best uh, and most unique death metal vocal experiences that I've heard in a long time. Um, it's inhuman. I mean, it, it doesn't sound like a person. When you listen to other death metal bands like Cannibal Corpse, uh, and we'll just pull them out of the hat because you know that's a go-to you know, go death metal sound. Um, if, if most people that only dabble in, in death metal probably know Cannibal Corpse. So you think about George Corpse Grinder Fisher and his vocals. Yeah, they're harsh. Yeah, they're gurgly. Uh, but it sounds like a person. This does not sound like a dude. It, this doesn't sound like a dude making death metal style vocals. This sounds like some type of, of, of inhuman being. The, the dude doesn't sound human. He just doesn't. And it's amazing. And uh, it's not just one flat style across the board. He gives a lot of different inflections within his vocal delivery. So let's talk about the songs. Um, uh, of Human Frailty starts it off, and it comes right out of the gate with this uh, knuckle-dragging uh, 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 caveman-style death metal riff. Uh, the drums just pound you in the head. The big, meaty uh, guitars come in. And then his first vocal sound of the album is a classic, ooh, kind of, I can't even make the sound, but it's it's a classic delivery that lets you know oh, that this is what we're going to get going forward. Um, and the, uh, the 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 song is just it's mostly mid tempo. Uh, well, it comes out of the gate kind of like I said that that push pulsating caveman rip, but then it slows down into this dirgy kind of uh, death doom vibe. And um, overall, the overall quality of the sound uh, is is varied. Um, it's, it's not, uh, it, they don't stay in one particular, uh, type of style. They give you a lot of different, uh, flavors. Um, so if you're a metal fan, not necessarily death metal, but if you just like heavy, heavy music, there's a lot of variety in here that could appeal to you. Uh, so I just talked about kind of the death doom sound, um, in, in, in this lead off track, it kind of reminds me a little bit of, uh, I don't have the album to show you, but last, last year's, um, um, uh, one of the albums that was talked about a lot was was Worm for Everglade. Uh, I get a little bit of, of that vibe with just the really heavy sounding guitar riffs and the slow, slow tempo. Now it's not so slow that it lulls you to sleep, but it slows it way down and drags it out and just gives you that kind of feel. What they also introduce on this track is a keyboard sound that is very, very ominous and eerie. And they use that several times throughout the album. And it gives the, the, the songs a lot of atmosphere. Um, kind of like, you know, you add, you know, in black metal, you add that, that keyboard element. And it gives you, it just kind of adds to that cold atmospheric sound. Well, with this, with this version, with this variety of death metal that Maul's giving you, you get that keyboard element. And the atmosphere that you get is just very haunting and eerie. It's not cold and icy. It's... It's just, it scares the crap out of you. And it, you hear that, and you're not quite sure what kind of horrific thing is coming, but you know that something's on the horizon. And we'll talk about that here in a second. So if you if human frailty kicks it off, you get a lot of different variety in that song. Kind of gives you a good idea of what you're going to get for the whole album. They follow that up with the title track, Seraphic Punishment. I guess I should have mentioned the name of the album is Seraphic Punishment. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. So, um... The only thing I'm going to say about this song is this is this is probably the, the song of the year. 
I absolutely love this track. It gives you everything that you want about heavy music, especially death metal. Um, the the trademark the the thing that I like most about it is just the 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 uh, um, riff. It, it gives you that traditional kind of thrash style riff, um, and then they they just drive it home. It's so heavy. It sounds like a bulldozer uh, rolling over your nutsack. Is really kind of what it what it what it is. That's how heavy the song is. The guitars are thick, uh, down tuned, and they just give you this this tremendous riff and. They break out into a classic. Uh, um, there's a, a breakdown to mid midpoint to toward the midpoint of the song. They give you this classic breakdown riff. And if you like thrash metal, if you like hardcore, if you like uh, death metal with grooves and, and heavy riffs, it's one of the greatest. It's one of the best death metal riffs I've heard in a long time. And then to 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 really even to to drive it home even further, they take that riff and they slow it down to like a half time speed. And it just pummels you even more. And then they close out the song, um, speed it up again. The great song, you're gonna love it. Then, then we get Repulsive Intruder. Um, this song is uh, it kicks off with kind of the classic groovy Dave Lombardo Slayer type of triplet style riff with the cymbals and the and the uh, uh, um, du double bass or bass drum. I'm not a drummer, so I can't really talk about patterns and things like that. But it's that classic sound uh, that you get. And then it, it it drives goes right into this driving groovy riff. A lot of groovy riffs, memorable riffs galore litter this album. Um, plus so many memorable moments. And that's another thing about death metal that's one of my complaints. So a lot of death metal just it, it's good when you listen to it, and then when you're done, you're like, man, I can't really think about, I can't hear any of the songs in my head. When you're chugging along with the album, you're like, oh yeah, this is great. But when it's over with, a lot of it didn't really sink in. This there are so many memorable moments and memorable riffs on this album that you're going to remember these tracks. Um, so again, Repulsive Intruder starts off with that groovy kind of that that uh, s mid 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 paced or slower to mid paced groove riff, and then about a minute and a half into the song, they press the accelerator and they go into straight on thrash vibe, and they just kick your ass with uh, with with everything. Um, that's followed up by Monarchy of Mold. I, I, now I, I, I think this Monarchy of Mold has an intro riff that, um, when I first heard it, the first thing I thought of was, uh, a riff off of, uh, Far Beyond Driven, uh, classic Pantera album. And it's, um, um, Becoming, I think is the song. Um, but I, I, uh, I heard that and I thought, man, that, that just, that's, it, they're not ripping it off, but that was the first thing I thought. Then I went back and I listened to that Pantera song, and I was right. Uh, check it out. Check out uh, uh, Monarchy of Mold, and then go and listen to uh, Becoming by Pantera, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, again, they're not aping Pantera. They're not ripping anybody off, but that uh, that riff came to mind. But what we're talking about here is, again, Pantera is one of the classic, if not the, the, the go-to band for groove metal. So... Um, it goes back to uh, about how groovy these songs are and how groove infested the, the the guitar riffs are, and they just stick in your head and they're earworms. So that's a great song. And then um, side two starts with Deity Demise. Now Deity Demise, I talked about those eerie keyboards that we first heard in the, the lead off track, and they really go to the extremes in this song. And they're not real noodly keyboard lines. They're not really. Uh, technical, so they're just kind of like chords and sounds. But toward the end of this song, it drifts off into this kind of slow, dirgy, uh, heavy sounding thing, and it is just eerie as fuck. And it leaves you wondering, you know, like I said, you know something evil's coming, you're just not sure. You don't know if you're about to get uh, abducted by aliens and, and flown up into the airship and have a, a anal probe shoved up you and come out the top of your head, or you don't know if you're going to encounter some uh, subhuman or inhuman uh, tribal demon uh, from the depths of the hills of the, of the Dakotas uh, that's going to come out and, and, and suck your soul out from, from your nutsack up through the, through the top of your skull. Either way, you just know something evil is coming. And I talked about the album cover, and, I, and, and again, just look, look at that creepy dude let me get that creepy dude there. And then on the back, like, you, you don't know, you don't know if this guy's, like I said, some, some demon or some alien. You're not sure, but either way, 
it's creepy and it's horrifying and uh, it's an, you know oddly enjoyable at the same time. So again, through side two, we get we get the same kind of thing uh, buried in resin, uh, uh, oracular burial grounds. That if I'm saying that right, that that's a, a crushing song. Infatuation has a great mid tempo kind of uh, thrashy groove to it, and the album closes with Carrie and Totem. What a great uh, title, Carrie and Totem, and it kind of closes out and gives you that same feel with uh, the eerie keyboard tones toward the end. So to kind of summarize. Um, an, a great upcoming American death metal band that utilizes a lot of different uh, uh, sounds and um, uh, influences. Um, I, I think that, uh, you know, for modern metal fans, if you're fans of like bands like Gate Creeper, um, uh, I mentioned uh, Worm earlier, uh, it, it, uh, Exhumed. I hear like, you know, Exhumed, I think, is, is really good at doing this too. They give you a lot of different variety. Of, of different heavy sounds. You know, Exhumed can play brutal death metal with different type of vocal inflections with their two vocalists, um, but they can also give you elements of classic thrash and elements of new wave of traditional heavy metal. And you get the same thing with Maul. Maul, Maul takes all of those different kinds of sounds and influences and, and subgenres and and weaves them together into this this product that is just absolutely hypnotizing from the beginning to end. It's engaging, it's memorable, it's heavy. Uh, I, I don't think it mimics anybody in particular. Um, it doesn't rip anybody off, so it has it has a, 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 a unique kind of sound to it. And more, it's the vocal delivery of Garrett Alvarado. He, he really gives this thing um, the, the unique flavor that separates it from everything else. Um, and, and a neat thing about this guy, I met this guy at the show, and you hear these inhuman sounds coming from these album grooves, and you're like, well, like, what can make, what kind of thing can make these noises? And then you see this dude, and he's just this big guy, he's like six, six foot more, because I'm short, but he's this big dude, and he just, he looks um, very intimidating. And then you go to talk to him, and he's one of the most gentle dudes that you've ever met in your entire life. He was very, very generous, very, uh, very engaging, uh, very happy, um, and and a complete and total opposite when he hits the stage and turns on this 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 character within this band. Uh, also interesting to note, um, and I did not know this until I did a little more research on the band. Prior or, or before, uh, he also dabbled, or not I say dabbled. He was involved in um, I don't know if it's semi professional or. Amateur, I don't know, but uh, wrestling. So if you uh, Google the character um, Deicide, D-I-A-C-I-D-E, Deicide, uh, Deicide Wrestler, you'll find some YouTube videos of Garrett uh, in his wrestling days. Uh, very interesting. Just interesting to check that out. But just so unique, I think, that a, a guy can, can make these kind of sounds and, and come off as being this evil this just evil entity, and he's one of the nicest guys that I've ever met in the metal community. So, um, to keep this under 20 minutes, hopefully, so you guys won't get too bored, uh, I can't, I, I just can't encourage enough, if you like metal and death metal, and you've not heard of them all, check this band out, give them some support. Again, uh, the album is called Seraphic Punishment, it's on Redefining Darkness uh, Records. Uh, the title track Check the title track out. I'm sure it's on YouTube somewhere. It is going to kick your ass, and it's a really great indicator of what's to come from the entire album. So, um, really, probably it was most definitely going to make my year end best of list. And right now, uh, honestly, I'm I, you know the, every time I listen to it, I I like something more about it that I didn't find the last time. And I, I think this this is a candidate for album of the year. It really is. Um, it's definitely going to be on that list. So again, Mole. Seraphic Punishment, new, uh, new American death metal band from Fargo, North Dakota. Support these guys. Check them out. And uh, thanks for visiting me today in the shop. And as always, I'll catch you on the flip side.